but let me ask you a question. <clears throat> Who's got debt? Okay, <laughs> thank you. Okay, and a better question is, who's earning more now than five years ago? Anyone? Almost everyone. Who's got more debt now than five years ago? Again, the same answer. Thank you. Right, why is it, why is it that we are earning more money, but at the same time we've got more debt? I think it's because we don't understand the system. So my name is Dr. Anas Dreher, and today I'm going to introduce you to the system and show you why it is that the majority of people will stay poor. Right, so the moment that we understand it, and then I'm going to give you a solution, show you how to, to break the system, and then how to get to where you want to be financially. So what I'm going to do today, I'm not only going to tell you about debt eradication, that's why we are here today, but I'm also going to show you some alternatives and try to give you as many tips as possible so that we can understand why we should do certain things. Unfortunately, you're going to find that in order for us to, to get ahead, there is going to be sacrifices. There's no other way, especially in the beginning. We have to break the cycle. And the moment that we can break the cycle, then we can start uh, to learn how to apply, for example, the formula for riches. So if you turn to your page, I think it's five. What we're going to discuss today is basically the following. I'm going to introduce you quickly to what is wealth, the principle of Kaizen, Kaizen wealth, and then the formula for riches. I'm going to spend quite some time on the formula because I believe that the moment that we understand the formula, we understand what we should do as well as it's a guideline to see because the moment that I'm going to break the formula, there's no ways for me to to go ahead and to proceed and to become a wealth creator. So, and if you've got any questions relating to it. Now, some of my students have been with me now for 207 weeks, so we are going to do, Valdi, a lot of recapping. Uh, but I think the more that we can recap, the more we learn at the end of the day. So if you've got questions, please ask me. And then I'm going to introduce you to the system, tell you what the system is. And I'm going to use a lot of examples. Uh, the reason why I'm going to use examples, spreadsheets, is simply because if we do certain things and we keep on doing them in a certain way, we're going to get a specific outcome. So a trick about this whole thing, certain things, certain ways, certain outcome. And that gives us a formula. The majority of people do certain things. They don't get the outcome that they want. But we can predict by continue doing and keep on doing what you're doing, what the outcome is going to be. So by making a change, we'll show you the difference in the outcome. And that's the only reason why I'm going to show you a lot of spreadsheets. So don't worry too much about the figures. Worry about the principles. Because the moment that we understand the principle, the principle is, unless we change, we're going to stay the same. Does that make sense? Right. And then what we're going to do, depending on, on, on the time factor, uh, this afternoon... Uh, I'm going to get into a plan how to get out of debt and then identify your spending patterns, give you a tip or two about that. And I would like to spend as much as possible in the afternoon time on the Wealth Accelerator Finder because what I've seen is that it's not the fact that we haven't got money. We, we've got the money, but we spend it incorrectly. That, that's a problem. And the reason why we do not spend it correctly is because First of all, we're ignorant. We don't understand it. And secondly, we don't understand that we have to spend money. So, but where is going to, the how is going to, to determine how successful we're going to be at the end of the day. Right. Yeah, and I think then that will be more or less the end of the day. I do think I've got more than enough material to keep you busy for two days or three days. Uh, and if you'd like to ask any question at any time, just put up your hand, give you the mic, and... You can ask it. Right. Any questions so far? Thank you. Uh, can this be applied to your business as well? Absolutely. Absolutely. And one of the things, and please uh, thank you for asking that question. And one of the things, perhaps I should begin with that. Why not? Can we begin with that? Can we apply this to your business as well? Yeah, definitely. Now, what I see business people, what they do, what they don't do is they run their whole business 
and their personal affairs through their business. And the first question normally that they ask me is, but I cannot maintain or I do not have a budget. It's impossible because some months I'm making a lot of money, other months I'm making nothing. So how on earth can I apply what we're going to learn here today? And basically today is your spending and budget planning. The first thing that you need to do the moment that you're on a commission or the moment that you've got your own business is to separate the two. So you need to have a personal account and a business account. And what you're going to do is you're going to set up your own budget, your personal budget as well as a business budget, two total, total separate things. Now, what I've done my whole life, I've been either in business or on a commission basis. So you're going to find that there are some months where you are earning more money than other months. But the moment that you've got a budget, so the commission or the business, this is where the money comes in. Out of that, you allocate your money for your budget. Right? So you've got a budget account, and you stick within the budget. And today is going to be about the budget. Now, what happens the moment that you've got more income than what you need in terms of the budget? That means it's going to stay within the business. But what I've done if you do have a flexi bond or access bond or something like that, I've allocated that surplus directly as a float. I, I've, I, I called it a float. So I use that money and I park it within my access bond, flexi bond. Right. But here's a trick. You need to keep record of that. So you have to set up an Excel spreadsheet and then immediately say, this is the amount of float that is going to my bond. So you know exactly the reason for that is next month your business or your personal in your personal capacity you can run at a loss. There's not enough money in the business. So then you're allowed to touch your float and bring the money back into the business to repeat the process. Otherwise you're not going to have any control over your budget. Uh, can I give you another tip? Yeah. Okay. If you're running a business, if you're running a business, you're going to find that there are two things that you need to take into consideration the whole time. The first thing is, the moment that you trade, there will be VAT applicable. Now, first of all, that VAT is not yours. Will you agree with me? We do the government a favor by charging. And what I see the majority of people are doing, business people are doing, they use the VAT as part of the cash flow. Do you see the problem? So the moment that you think it's yours, you're going to start to spend it and live according to that. So what we've done is simply the VAT amount is also parked in the same account, but with a separate Excel uh, entry. Right, because it's not my money. And another thing that we've done, and that I will strongly advise you, is you know how much tax you're going to pay between yourself and the business. I mean, it's tax planning. And let's assume it's 20% or 35%. Average. So what we've done as well, we've taken the 35% directly and put it in a separate tax account. Now, once you're in the cycle, each and every six months, you're going to find that the receiver wants payment. So you simply take it out of your bond, if you've got access facilities, you take that specific amount out of your bond, you immediately pay the receiver, right? Because it's allocated to the receiver, it's not your money. And by doing that, the receiver is basically subsidizing you on the six months interest portion on your growth in terms of you're getting 15% at, at currently 15.5% tax-free interest on the receiver's money. Does that make sense? 